Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. This time, I want to walk through all the different subclasses that I love from each of the different classes in the game. I know a lot of you have been waffling back and forth about which class to start out with, and maybe this will provide you with some information of an interesting class that you can go ahead and check out. I'll also, for each subclass, try to mention which mythic path I think works really, really nicely to go with it. Um, a couple of caveats. First and foremost, as you all know, if you follow the channel, I'm all about story. I'm all about role playing. Mechanics are secondary for me. So there will definitely be some subclasses where I'll point them out because I like the role playing opportunity that this particular class provides not so much because I feel like it's the best mechanics that is available out of all the subclasses in the list. So I'm sure there'll be people down in the comments letting me know that I've overrated a particular class or I've underrated a really amazing class and laying out how the mechanics can help you to create the best character possible. I absolutely look forward to that dialogue and that feedback and hopefully all of you are going to be able to benefit from it. And so I say all that to say, this is all just a matter of perspective. I'm not trying to pretend to be the end all be all for which a subclass is best. I'm just presenting information. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So first up is Alchemist. I absolutely love Alchemist. And my favorite subclass in Alchemist is Grenadier. I love bombs and I love going all in on throwing bombs. It was fantastic in Kingmaker and is just as great in this game. In fact, the Trickster run that I'm doing right now uses the Grenadier Alchemist and it's bringing all the old wonderful memories back. Claim the fame here is that you get precise bomb. When the Alchemist throws a bomb, it doesn't affect allies. So that means regardless of what your bomb is supposed to do, fire, holy damage, whatever, bombs away, you don't have to worry about where your allies are actually placed. Great, great stuff. Uh, part of the reason I love bombs so much is the versatility of them. So you can have them do fire damage, holy damage. You can have them choke all the enemies in a particular range. You can have it dispel magical effects from a really difficult boss. There are a bunch of different ways that you can use bombs and there's no wrong way. So I really, really enjoy going through this class. Um, mythic paths that you can combine with it. Um, Lich is the only mythic path that has powers specifically meant to assist an alchemist. So I was definitely a very, very strong choice for you to go with. But of course you could choose any mythic path to go with any of these subclasses. So that's another thing to note. When I give these suggestions, I'm not saying like, it's like end all be all. It's just, I feel like there's really good synergy in this particular area. Um, for a follow up, and I will give a runner up for each of these other classes, uh, I would choose vivisectionist. I don't particularly like vivisectionist because again, I love bombs. And if I'm gonna choose an alchemist, I want to be able to use bombs but there are absolutely a bunch of people who swear by vivisectionists, and it's pretty obvious why. You're going to get the advantage of mutagens, which the alchemist gets, which are alchemical bonuses to a particular attribute. Keep in mind that most of the items and spells that you get throughout the game are an enhancement bonus. So this will stack with the bonus that the vivisectionist gets, and then you get a ton of sneak attack damage as you level up, along with medical discoveries, which is going to add different components and things that you can do as an alchemist. You could create an incredible melee fighter putting all of this together. Again, it's not for me. If I'm an alchemist, I wanna use bombs, but there's no denying that this is great, great stuff. That synergizes very well with Trickster which is going to provide you with feats that's going to help you do more critical damage. It's going to add more sneak attack damage for you. And if you have a decent intelligence score and you have a few skills leveled up, 
it's going to help you make the absolute most out of those skills as well. So I feel like this meshes very, very well with Trickster. Moving on to Arcanist, and you all have probably seen my builds. You know which one I like the most out of this area, Phantasmal Mage. You have to be a gnome if you want to be able to take this, but I feel like it's absolutely fantastic class because in my opinion, the Illusion Magic School is the best one in Wrath of the Righteous for crowd control. Enchantment has a bunch of really, really powerful spells, but a lot of them are single target. And so it's really harder to shut down a whole room with that magic school, as opposed to illusion, which a lot of the higher level spells not only impact an entire room, but it will impact an entire room and enemies only, making it very, very easy for you to whip out something that completely decimates the defenses of the enemies you're going up against. Claim the fame for Phantasmal Mage is that you automatically get arcane meta magic, which are basically meta magic feats that you can activate by using points from your arcane pool. So instead of having wands that have temporary uses or having to burn a feat to be able to take quicken or um, maximize or things of that nature, you could just spend a couple of points from your arcane pool and it'll allow you to do the exact same thing on whatever spell you would like. And the cost of using these abilities is going to lower at level 20 and you can increase the size of your arcane pool, I believe through one of the mythic options that you get. So great, great stuff here. Makes you really, really powerful as an illusionist. Definitely recommend you check it out. Runner up is Brown Fur Transmuter, which in my opinion is the strongest buffer in the game for a couple of reasons. One, any spell that is um, transmutation, that is a range of personal, you can instead change it to a range of touch starting at level nine. So for example, spells like Ice Body or um, uh, Fire Body, those mage spells where it basically makes a particular mage immune to critical hits, a lot more defenses, things of that nature. Usually, you can only put that on yourself. The brown fur transmuter can put it on anyone. They also get a bonus to how much their attributes points they can increase when they're using a transmutation spell. So usually, and uh, when you're doing like bull strength, it's going to give you a plus four bonus to strength. Well, as a brown fur transmuter, that bonus can go to plus six and then I believe go to plus eight as well. So much, much more powerful buffs than what is available to the other classes in the game. This is runner up because you really need to take this all the way to level 20 in order to make the most of it. There are no party members that are going to allow you to do that. And honestly, I don't think any other party members even multi-class into this class all that well. Nanio, I guess, could, but it, 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 it's definitely not a seamless transition. And I feel like most people, myself included, don't want their main character tied up in just being a buffer for the party. Like you can do a little bit more, you can add some damaging spells and things of that nature, but the majority of your slots and things that you do are gonna be dedicated to making sure everybody in the party is properly buffed. And that's just not how I want to use my main character. So to me, this is more of a mercenary class, not necessarily something that I roll, but there's no denying that it's a huge boon to your party and something to consider. Next up is Barbarian. And me personally, I love Instinctual Warrior. These are essentially barbarians mixed with monk. So you're supposed to be someone who's completely in control of your rage. And because of that, you get blind fight feats as you level up automatically. And I think it's absolutely great stuff. How often you are able to use your rage is to some degree determined by your wisdom. Um, and you get increases to some of your like your initiative checks from your wisdom as well. So 
It's just really, really great, great stuff. You also get some of the monk powers added as possible selections when you're selecting rage power. So diamond soul, diamond body, things of that nature are available to you. I just feel like it's a, a great class overall. There are a lot of enemies that use concealment and invisibility and things of that nature to throw off your melee attacks. So automatically picking up these feats to go against that is great, great stuff. And from a role-playing standpoint, I just love the idea of someone who is capable of tremendous rage and tremendous violence, but has it all under control. I don't feel like this class synergizes particularly well with a specific mythic path, but I also don't feel like there's any mythic path that's wrong for it either. So you can kind of make your own choice about which one really, really works for you. Runner up, I'm definitely a big fan of Mad Dog. Uh, this is actually a holdover for me from Kingmaker because I would always respect Amiri into being a Mad Dog. So of course it allows you to take a pet. And then in addition to having a pet, it's gonna give you some specific things that basically help to synergize you and your pet working together. So you all are gonna get a plus four bonus on attack rolls when flanking. Um, you are going to be able to give trip to your pet. Despite this, I still like running this with a wolf. I like the idea of the wolf having uh, trip and doing trip automatically as part of its attack, as opposed to any other creature, they'll basically have to do a trip manually, which always feels like a waste of turn to me. So I definitely prefer a wolf with this because at level 14, you're gonna get throat cutter. Uh, whenever your B succeeds at a bull rush, overrun, or trip combat maneuver, um, you, the mad dog can then take an attack of opportunity as long as the creature is being threatened by the mad dog. So to me, you definitely want to have that wolf tripping up people and then your character is automatically going to get that free swing. Combine that with some other things and this could be a very, very powerful combination. Really enjoy it. Um, as far as what mythic path could work well with this, I actually like the idea of combining this with Azada because Azada has a superpower where it'll allow you to take a couple of teamwork feats and then apply it to the entire team. So you can take a teamwork feat that is going to help make your wolf much better at doing trip combat maneuvers. And you could take outflank as a teamwork feat to save all of your archers and melee fighters a feat um, since otherwise they would need to take it manually. And so I feel like there's the opportunity to not only buff your whole team, but make your pet significantly stronger as well. And so I feel like this folds nicely in with that. Next up is Bard. And this is the first class we've gotten to that I actually have not been able to play around with directly in the game, either the full game or the beta. Um, I would take Lindsay with me in Kingmaker. So I played around a little bit with archeologists. But other than that, I'm not really familiar with how this class works in Wrath of the Righteous. So I'll tell you the ones that I'm interested in that I want to play around with when I finally decide to dip into this class. Dirge Bard interests me quite a bit. Um, basically, it's, it's clearly meant to fold into Lich. It's going to give you a plus four bonus on saves against fear curses and death effects. And it's going to give you a bonus on lore religion ch checks while also allowing the bard to use mind affecting spells on the undead as if they were living creatures. That's definitely, definitely huge. And it's automatically going to give you some of the really, really nice necromancy spells as it's leveling up. Um, it will also give you a bonus on intimidate checks equal to half your level which is huge if you want to play the type of character that is able to um, shake enemies and automatically make them frightened. Usually you want that to be a character who depends upon strength because then there's a feat you can take where your strength modifier will increase your ability to intimidate enemies with persuasion. But this kind of allows you to make up for that even though the dirge bard might be someone that you're using at a distance with 
um, a, dis a dexterity based weapon. So really, really a lot of flexibility here. It looks like it folds in very nicely with a lich and something that I'm definitely looking forward to checking out. Uh, runner up for what I would like to check out is actually Thundercaller because I hear constantly and over and over again, every time I bring up using uh, chain lightning or anything of that sort, there's always this wave of commas that lightning is useless, demons are all immune to it, yada, yada, yada. So I'm really interested in taking a build that will of course take the ascendant element um, ability and showing someone who is just lighting up enemies left and right with lightning based powers and having a ball. And I feel like Thundercaller would really help me to be able to do that. Essentially, you're going to get Storm Call, which is going to summon bolts of lightning that will do random damage to an enemy for the amount of time that you have the call. And if you just so happen to be outside during a time when it's stormy, it's going to increase the damage of that call as well and get another boost to the damage for it at 14th level as well. You're also going to get Thunder Call, which is going to do sonic damage to all everyone within a 10 foot range and that's gonna increase over time as well. Just some really, really cool stuff here that isn't available to a lot of the other classes. And I think it'd be interesting to kind of be able to play around with it. Um, I like, again, the idea of meshing this with Azada because you are still going to get uh, some songs here and things that you can use in that manner. And I know that you get a bunch of different songs that you use as an Azada playthrough. So to me, it just meshes together nicely and um, fits right in with what you're already going to be doing as a bard. Next up is Blood Rager. And me personally, I love Steel Blood the most. To me, Steel Blood is the ultimate put on the heaviest armor you can get pick up the heaviest sword you can carry, run into the midst of the battle and go to town. So obviously it's going to allow you to use heavy armor as a blood rager, but it also allows you to cast spells in heavy armor without incurring an arcane spell failure chance. So very, very nice. And it's also going to increase the speed that you're able to move while you're in heavy armor. It reduces the armor check penalty and increases the maximum dexterity bonus you can get within your armor. So everything revolves around ensuring that you are able to do most of the things you would usually expect to be able to do while still wearing heavy armor. You do get spells up to level four, but again, because it's only going to level four, most of that is just going to be self buffs and trying to give yourself some protection. But really this is about put on some armor, pick up a heavy weapon, put yourself right into the fray and go to town. And I absolutely love it. I think this works out very, very nicely. Runner up for me is, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Steel Blood, I feel like folds in nicely with Demon because Demon can't combine its spell book with anybody anyway. It doesn't matter that your spell progression is very, very slow. And Demon, to me, melds well with classes where you like being right in the middle of the fray, hacking at people all around you. Demon is going to give you some things that allow you to, to teleport or charge and increase the efficacy of your melee attacks. So I think this all works great. Next up is Reform Fiend. And I'll be honest with you, it's not about the mechanics. The mechanics are just okay. Um, of course, you get a bloodline. Um, you get a plus one to attack and damage against evil creatures. And this bonus does increase every five levels. So it's going to be what? Plus four by the uh, end of your level ups. And at level 11, all of your melee attacks become good aligned. You also get some damage reduction against everything except evil creatures. It's okay, but just the concept of it that because you have to be a tiefling in order to be able to play this. 
And it's all about you used to be an evil creature, an evil person, and now you're trying to be on the path of good. And to me, that's the exact same path that Arushale is on. So for me, taking this class, taking Arushale on my team, and then taking Desna as my deity creates two people who are essentially on the exact same path of figuring out how do I turn away from the path of evil that I used to be on? And I think there's awesome role playing ability in doing that. And so because of that, it's my runner up and definitely a class that I love and I really enjoyed making a build for. Next up is Chevalier. And yes, I absolutely plan to keep pronouncing it this way, despite all the people <laughs> in the comments trying to explain why that's not correct. I've, I've explained multiple times that this pronunciation absolutely is correct. Anyway, my favorite subclass with the Chevalier is Beast Rider. And that's because if you just take the standard version, and you go to your animal companion selection, they will only let you choose horse. So Beast Rider is one of the few that let you pick a different animal outside of that. Out of this list with this build, I feel like there's no way to really go wrong. Obviously Wolf gives you a little bit more crowd control because it's gonna be able to add a bite. Smilodon gets a lot more attacks compared to other creatures. So if you what you really want is a damage bonus, that's gonna help you a lot. Leopard is probably the tankiest uh, creature you get in, out of this entire list because its dexterity just goes sky high. So you can get the Leopard to be able to take hits that other enemies just wouldn't be able to deal with. But just a lot of great options and I really enjoy being able to have that expanded class list. Outside of that, Chevaliers are just really, really awesome from being able to share their teamwork feats and some of the flag bearing um, things that they get as they level up. It's just really, really cool stuff. This is the build that I'm probably going to run when I play Azada once all the issues with mounted combat have been cleared up because I really like the teamwork feats that I can spread around to everyone and the superpower regarding might where we're going to get a bonus to damage every time we do charge. And of course, in mounted combat, you want to be charging as many times as possible. Uh, runner up is Chevalier of the Paw. I'm really, really fascinated with this. You have to be a halfling in order to take this particular class. And it's only going to allow you to take a dog or a wolf. But in addition to that, you are able to become part of the Order of the Paul, which is not available to any of the other Chevaliers, and is going to give you specific bonuses that are not available to any of the others as well. Ending up with Giant Slayer, which is going to increase the um, bonus you get on damage rolls against enemies that are at least large size. By the time you're reaching past level 15 and getting to those late game enemies, a ton of enemies are large and giant. So this bonus is going to be very, very, very useful for you. And this is an absolutely fantastic class. Definitely something to check out. Again, Azada fits in very, very nicely with this. Next up is Cleric. Out of all the subclasses, I definitely love Ecclesia Theurge the most. Um, first and foremost, it's one of the few subclasses under Cleric that allow you to still choose two domains. Angel Fire Apostle will allow you to do this as well. However, Angel Fire also gets one less spell slot per level. So Ecclesia the Urge under Cleric is really the ultimate spell casting Cleric class. Um, it's going to give you a bonded holy symbol, which is going to allow you once per day to restore any spell that you had previously prepared. You are going to lose the cleric proficiency, so you're not gonna be able to wear armor. You're not gonna be great at um, uh, melee combat, but that's okay, because you're supposed to be going all in on spell casting anyway. You do also get Blessing of the Faithful, which is going to provide one ally a plus two sacred bonus on attack rolls, skill checks, ability checks, saving throws, and AC until your next turn. This is absolutely fantastic way to try to get over those tough skill checks um, that maybe you're 
I like repeatedly fails. <laughs> so definitely made a lot, a lot of use out of that. You also get domain mastery, which obviously I didn't use. Uh, honestly, I didn't use very much, but basically um, you can choose your cleric domain and then designate one as your primary domain and the other is your secondary domain. You can then use your non-domain spell slots to prepare spells from your primary domain's spell list. And then each day when you prepare spells, you can select a different domain granted by your deity to gain access to that domain spell list instead of the secondary domain spell list. So it basically allows you a lot more flexibility and variety and what kind of spells that you have access to. Honestly, again, I never use this because I specifically chose animal and community because it had access to everything that I was going to need. But something to keep in mind in case you were considering using this class, obviously, if you're going to do this, Angel is going to fold right into it no problem. The spell books combined as well. You could create an extremely powerful character with this combination. And this is actually what I ran. If you see the angel videos where I'm going up against Ascari and I was very, very happy with how that turned out. Runner up for me is probably Crusader. This is more so of a role playing choice, but you are supposed to be a crusader and leading the crusade movement. So to me, choosing crusader and then choosing I am a day as your deity, it basically should be the canon choice <laughs> in the game. I'll be honest, from a mechanic standpoint, it's not nearly going to give you what going in Clessy Theurge is going to provide, but it's going to give you a much more melee oriented version of the cleric. So I actually would love the opportunity to go sword and board with this character. Stand right up front. Of course, the long sword is I am a day's official weapon and you get some great versions of that weapon in the game. So to basically depend upon having this fantastic shield and then uh, a sword blessed by I am a day herself and go through the entire game, I would love that. And then you get Crusader bonus feats that are basically going to help make you even more proficient in melee combat as you're moving forward. So really, really nice stuff. Um, again, it's not going to give you as much spellcasting flexibility as some of the other ones, but it does go up to level nine. So you can make a decision for yourself what you like from that. But that's my uh, runner up class subclass. OK, we'll cut it off there. I don't want this video to be too long but hope all of you enjoyed the content if you did please leave me a like down below share this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i will see you all in the next video take care